Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on BC 103 on New Testament survey. Today, we're going to study on one of Paul's letters. Even before we could start, can I request one of you all to please lead us in prayer? Can I request, uh, yeah, Lubega, would you be able to pray? Let's pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this wonderful Monday, new week. Yes. Lighting and new movement. Lord, we come before you, thanking you for this lesson, Lord, as we wait for our brethren and colleagues to join. Lord, we also do pray for our dear the lecturer. Please, Lord, bless her and let her be used as a vessel to teach us and to show us the keys to the kingdom, Lord, as we pass through today's episode of Philippians. So, Lord, guide her and also help us to give us wisdom so that we can really understand and comprehend on what Paul, through the Holy Spirit, wanted to teach this church those days and today. We do pray and believe that it's going to come to pass in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and we say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lubega, for that wonderful prayer. And as others are joining in, okay, that's wonderful to see everyone join in. Uh, was there a delay in receiving the link or what happened that everyone joined late today? Was there any technical glitches so that we can correct it from our side if there's anything? For me, I think the notification went off. So I was just trying to point it out. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. It was with everyone. So you know, I was just wondering, was there any technical problem from our side that needs to be rectified? Great. Uh, thank you. So it's nice to see everyone. And yes, today we are going to study on uh, one of the letters of Paul, which is also uh, the prison epistle. So Philippians is the prison epistle of Paul. So um, most scholars believe that the letter was written around AD 62 while Paul was in the prison at Rome. So Paul wrote this letter to the believers at Philippi, Philippi uh, with whom he shared a close partnership and uh, there was a special bonding or affection towards this church and we also address the letter to the church elders and deacons and we also see uh, throughout this letter we see a uh, joy of the christian experience uh, is a dominant theme running through the book of philippians as we discuss that, before we could move ahead, let's uh, let's talk about the history of the city of Philippi. Well, Philippi was founded as a gold mining center, and it became a city of prominence because it was on the main road to Rome from the Western world. And Philippi was a chief city of the part of Macedonia. Even though Thessalonica was the capital city of that Roman province, we see that Philippi was a Roman colony. And as a result of being a Roman colony, the people of that city were Roman citizens. We also see the city was a model of Roman law and education. The people were noted to be noble, educated, and disciplined in nature. So with that, we also see the city did not officially allow a synagogue and, um, and would be somewhat anti-Semitic. So with this background, we'll also see when was this letter written. We see uh, the scholars say that it was written in 62 or between 62 to 64 AD. And um, why? what was the purpose of Paul writing this letter to the Church of Philippians? And uh, before we could see, how was, this, how was this church formed? Well, we see that Apostle Paul, uh, in this letter, he 
expresses a gratitude and affection for the Philippians church. Because when he visited the church, uh, uh, when Paul, on his first missionary journey, he visited some of the churches. And on his second missionary journey, after which Paul circulated through Galatia, founding the churches on his first missionary journey, he returned to Antioch to reconnect with the churches. And after being uh, after he spent about three years in Antioch, he decided to revisit the churches that he had previously established. So when he, uh, like after visiting the churches, Paul felt that they should continue into the new territory. And he proposed to go towards the northward of Britannia, that is the Asia Minor. So he was sensing to check, uh, check in spirit. And when he was led by the Holy Spirit to move on towards Macedonia, uh, in, in Acts chapter 16, we see that uh, he gets a vision, a man uh, from the region of Macedonia pleading with Paul to come and visit Macedonia. We read that in Acts chapter 16, verse 9, where Paul responded and immediately he changed his direction and headed westward to Macedonia. And we also see Paul eventually arrived at Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia. What happened? Was there any... You want to add something, Paul? Paul, Anything your voice is not clear. Thank you. Paul, uh, your voice is not clear. You want to add something or you are trying to say something? We are not able to get it clearly. Is it possible you could type? Paul, we are not able to hear you. We are unable to hear you. Pastor, he responded, say it's an error. Can okay, continue. Okay, it was an error. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, John. Yes. Okay. So when Paul and Silas, uh, okay, before Paul and Silas, I would like to say what happened. Uh, we know the story what happened in Acts chapter 16 that uh, Barnabas and Paul had an argument uh, because of John Mark. They were uh, as Barnabas wanted to take John Mark on the second missionary journey for which Paul disagreed. So they both separated. Barnabas and John Mark went towards the other side uh, on their missionary journey, and we see Silas and Timothy join. Paul. I mean, Silas first joined Timoth uh, Paul, uh, and on the way, Timothy joins him. Okay, so Paul and Silas arrived in Philippi. Since there was no synagogue, they connected with uh, a Jewish woman called Lydia, who gathered by a river for prayer and fellowship. We see that in chapter 16, uh, when we read a little below 13 to 15, we see about Lydia. So Paul preached in the streets. So Paul uh, began his ministry at Philippi on the street, whereas in other places he began in a synagogue because there was no synagogue in Philippi. So he began his ministry on the streets and he began to create a stir, especially um, where he cast out a uh, spirit of divination out of a young woman, and uh, we know uh, the result what happened. So, the master of the servant girl dragged Paul and Silas before the city of the magistrates and accused them there of being, uh, being Jew and preaching things that way anti Roman. And because of the city antagonism towards Jew. 
Paul and Silas were beaten hardly and they were thrown into prison without a trial. We also see Paul and Silas sang through the night. And we see eventually uh, it led the jailer there and his household to the Lord. And Paul was released from the prison when uh, they discovered that he was a Roman citizen. And Paul was forced, Paul forced them to make a public issue because they, uh, they had to release him in a proper way because they bet him publicly and they also uh, ha have to release him in public. And Paul picked up where he left the ministry from the house of Lydia, which most likely was a meeting place for the first, uh, the new church at Philippi. Uh, we also see when we follow up the, uh, the when we follow up the history of the Philippian church, we see that Luke most likely was with Paul in the beginning stages of this church. And he may have stayed there in the church too, build it strong. So it could be noted that whenever Paul got close to Philippi, we see that Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, seems to link up with Paul in Acts 20. That's how we know that Luke also would have been with Paul. So the church at Philippi sent gifts to Paul on a couple of occasions during his ministry at Thessalonica. And Paul undoubtedly he visited the church at Philippi on the front end of his third missionary journey when he came into Macedonia. And we also see that Paul revisited Philippi on his way to Jerusalem after his third missionary journey. So the church at Philippi sent an offering to Paul while he was in the prison uh, in Rome by the hand of Epaphroditus, where uh, the, the church in Philippi learned that Paul was in the prison at Rome. So they were mindful of him. They had a good rapport. And uh, so they sent their uh, 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 one of the prominent leader, Ephraim, with some offering to be of help to Paul. So uh, Paul received that offering with a heart of gratitude. We see that in chapter 1, the, when he started, he says, he addresses the letter to the elders, saints, and the deacons of the church. And Paul sends the letter that was addressed uh, to this great church by the hand of Epaphroditus while in the prison. And Paul fully accepted that he would visit Philippi again after his release from the prison. We see that in Philippians, Philipp, Philippians chapter 2, verse 22, 24. He says that, I trust in the Lord that I myself shall come shortly. So uh, we also see when was this book written? It was written in the first Roman imprisonment. Okay, and uh, some of the main themes, we can see some of the main themes. Uh, well, I'll just share the PowerPoint slide where I've listed some of the themes that we can look at in today's session. Okay, this is the map. We see the Antioch, where Paul and Silas moved toward Tarsus, Derby, and they they moved to Philippi in Macedonia. They visit other places and they go there. Uh, we will be studying in detail in the third year when we study on the book of Acts. So we can study on each missionary journey and the places, what happened in each place, what are the incidents that took place in detail. Yeah, well, these are some of the themes that I would like to discuss in today's class. Uh, where uh, the joy in the Christian life is all about the perspective. True joy is not based on the circumstances. Well, the key 
of lasting contentment is found through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is the divine perspective that Paul wanted to communicate in his letter to the Philippians. Well, first thing we see that Christ is the ultimate example for believers uh, where through following the pattern of humility and sacrifice, we can find the joy in all circumstances. We also see another theme where Christians can experience a joint suffering just as Christ suffered. When we read through chapter 2, verse 8, we see that he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on cross. We also see the next theme, Christians can experience joy in service. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life. Pouring out like a liquid offering to God. Just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share your joy. This is what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 17 to 18. And when we move to Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, can I request one of you all to read Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, please? Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Amen. So what we see in verse 9, it says clearly that I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteousness through faith in Christ. So Christian can experience joy in believing. And when we turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, can I request one of you all to read? Yes. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. 18 and 19. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John, for reading that. So what we see here, Christians can experience the joy in giving. When we are generous, when we give, we receive. That's what in the Gospels, we, we, we learn that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And here there's a promise which says that God has been a provider. He's been Jehovah Jireh. God who takes care of each of us will supply all all our needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. We have already received it. When we believe, it happens. Some of the key verses we see here or uh, even before I could move on to the key verses, let me look at the chapter. What does it say? There are only four chapters in this book. So chapter 1 talks about the confidence of the believer. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. It talks about being confident of this very thing. That he who has began, began a good work in you. Will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. What a confidence that we can have as a believer. Chapter 2 talks about the supreme example of Christ himself. Because he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Verse 9 talks about, therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name 
which is above every name. That, look at the power in his name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of those in heaven and of those on earth. And of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we see the supreme example of Jesus Christ in this letter. In chapter 3, it talks about the ultimate goal of the believer. What is the goal of the believer? That we need to press on. Chapter 3, verse 12, it talks about that. We need to press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. That is our goal. That I need to press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So this should be in our mind. We need to have this in our mind and then press on towards that goal. And in chapter 4, we see that the believer's meditation, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, talks about finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, and whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So here is setting us where we need to set our mind on. Our mind should be on the things that are, um, that are true, that are noble, that are just, that are pure, which is lovely and of a good report. And if there's anything virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, we need to meditate on those things, which is a super powerful, which can be meditated within us. And also in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, we see what a promise that Paul writes and gives to us that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We see the glory of God within us. When we are weak, then we are strong. This is what even he wrote to the other churches. When Paul was writing to the other churches, he wrote, when you are weak, then you are strong to the Corinthians church. And here we see in, in, uh, in his letter to Philippians church, we see that he's encouraging the believers, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Ultimately, he's saying something very important here. Very important here. It is Christ who's indwelling within each of us, is strengthening us. We see how each and every book in the New Testament are relating to each other. When we read the book of Genesis, Now, before I could go to the book of Genesis, I would like to make a point here. Why is Paul telling this to the Philippians church? Can anyone say? Why is he quoting this scripture to the Philippians church? Anyone from the class? Was there any problem in this church? What was the purpose? You can refer to your notes. What was the purpose of Paul writing this letter to the Philippians? So then we can understand on this scripture, why is Paul saying that you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you? Uh, 
to address the problem in the Church of Philippians uh, because, yes. yeah, because of that. Yeah, and yeah. Also, please go ahead, please go ahead. Yeah, also, uh, there were some false teachers and uh, the believers were confused. So in all those things, Paul want them to be strong in the Lord and to come against all those odds. Yeah. See, <clears throat> the very purpose of Paul writing this letter, yes, the first letter itself, as we said, he, he's been very, uh, 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 he's showing his gratitude towards the, uh, towards the believers in the Philippian church for their financial help. Second, we see that uh, is addressing the problem in the Philippian church, especially there was a rivalry between the two prominent women, Yodia and Sintiche. Sintiche. And the third point, third purpose of e writing this letter is to refute the teaching of the Judaizers. There were some false teachers away coming from Galatians and they were causing problem even in Philippians. And some of who were going to the extreme, opposite extreme of perhaps of advocating a total disregard for the law, um, you know, against the teaching of Paul. So Paul is writing to the believers in this church about be strong. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And we see that he's relating, uh, you know, of Christ who's indwelling in you. Rely on the strength of Christ who's in you. Okay. Everyone, uh, is there anything that you would like to add or share? Okay. We see that the Christ who's indwelling on each of us can strengthen us at difficult times. So here we see that Paul urging, encouraging each one in the Philippians church. And now we see that he's also asking us to depend on God, that God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. He encourages them to rely on God to meet every need of them. We also see Christ in four ways in the gospel, or sorry, in the book of Philippians. We see Christ in the believer's life. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, we see that for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm just reading out the scriptures to save time. Okay, because there are a lot of other scriptures that we can discuss from this very small letter. The second point we see that Christ is a believer's mind. Christ is the believer's mind. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 talks about let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And also in Philippians chapter 3, 10, we see that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. What we see here, we see Christ is the believer's goal. And in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, again talks about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ is the believer's strength. And also Paul encourages one more point to this church. He says our spiritual citizenship is more, more important than the Roman citizenship. Our spiritual citizenship I repeat it. Our spiritual citizenship is more important than the Roman citizenship. We can also apply to our time in this day. 
and also two points he, he makes he shares in chapter 1 verse 27 he says that we are to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel behave like the citizen of heaven second point we see in philippians chapter 3 verse 20 he talks about for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the savior the lord jesus christ to come so we are not to look to roman government or to any of our government where we live in currently presently for our blessing of citizenship but to god with that we will see what are the distinct features of the book of philippians we see that paul had a special relationship with this church paul had uh, had been affection for this church we see that in philippians chapter 1 verse 8 he had a deep affection for this church and this is seen overall the tone of this book is very kind gentle encouraging it is truly uh, we could sense uh, this letter is something like a love letter especially to this church we see that the verse in for god is my witness how greatly i long for you all with the affection of jesus christ he means every word that he wrote in this letter and this letter was handwritten by paul himself and in philippians chapter 4:15 we see that this church was more generous it supported paul and his ministry financially they were generous enough to give paul and to support him so this is the significant because they were very poor church and they gave out from what they had that's why paul was saying that you know god shall bless you richly according to his glorious power Paul used this church as an example to others of sacrificial giving. He also see he writes in 2 Corinthians 8 1 to 5 like now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. This church understood Paul they loved paul they loved him for who he was in jesus christ they blessed him they supported him they prayed for him we see that mutual affection between each other paul seems to be more personal with this church than in any other church he uses personal pronouns like i me and my more in this letter than in any other letter Paul had a special relationship with the leaders of this church referring to him as his true yoke fellow or true companion Paul shares his inner motivation with this church we see in Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 we see that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain though he is in a difficult situation whereas Paul being in prison under chains he is not speaking any anything about his suffering about the situation that he is going through but then he has set his mind on 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 the higher calling on heavenly calling so he clearly encourages the the people in philippians saying that for me to live in christ so don't be worried about me don't be so much concerned about the situation that i am in but then set your mind on christ who can deliver us from any situation and also despite the situation here i am writing this letter i'm still ministering to people very clearly he says that for me to live is christ and to die is gain So I am prepared for anything but then I want to live so that I can expand the gospel of Christ and by he saying this he is also putting this thought in every believer in the Philippian church and not just that 
it does not end there through this letter been recorded in the new testament this thought has been put in each one of us each one of us as we read the letter of philippians we should carry this attitude that which was there in paul for paul it was if he could say been under chains if he could say for me to live is christ and to die is gain how much more we could do for us when we are not behind bars we are there we are we have the freedom we have the freedom just we need to look out the ways through which we could share christ in our life through our life and also paul is also stating that personally he is setting a higher call he is saying that i press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of god in christ jesus he is also opening our mind opening our thoughts that how we can think about the goal that is been there the purpose that god has put in each one of our life and how we could press toward that goal for the prize of the upward call of god in christ jesus there may be challenges we also see that paul writing a letter to the other churches he talks about the challenges but then he is encouraged by the word from god where the spirit ministers to paul and says that my grace is sufficient for you my grace is enough same way paul is encouraging each one of us set your thought higher despite your situation god will give us the grace to overcome our situation but at the same time he will strengthen us to fulfill the call the purpose that he has given to each one of us in in philippians chapter 2 verse 19 to 30 we see that paul gives us a unique description of faithful and how we can be a supportive toward the ministry he gives example of two leaders i could say who followed paul closely timothy who joined in the ministry of his journey paul timothy was like minded as paul he was genuine he had a genuine care and we also see that paul expressing the same kind of uh, you know feeling toward timothy a uh, genuine concern about timothy and you know they had this father son relationship with him and he also writes about timothy in other letters that timothy is a man proven of a good character and also we see ephrodites in philippians chapter 2 verse 24 to 30 we see that he was a soldier he was sacrificial in his service he put the needs of others ahead of his own and he carried the letter and the gift that the philippians church gave him and he went to rome to be to meet up with paul and be there to help him and during it during his time of ephrodites being with paul he was attacked with some kind of sickness some of the scholars says those days it was malaria was a very dangerous sickness he may have affected the scripture does not say that he was affected with malaria but then it just say that he was sick and he was almost at his deathbed he risked his life for the work of christ and here we see paul acknowledging that about ephrodites i'm sure paul and they both would have prayed for a supernatural healing for for fraidis and we see that in his life that god healed him he recovered from this dangerous sickness and here paul sending this letter with the hand of fraidis back to the church and acknowledging his good service
this is a glimpse of whole letter. We have four chapters. Chapter one talks about joy in living for Christ. And second chapter talks about joy in serving Christ in unity. And chapter three talks about joy in knowing Christ. And chapter four talks about joy in resting in Christ. We also see the tone with which Paul writes this letter. It is very warm, encouraging. And the key words often used in this letter interchangeably was joy, rejoice, have a mind of Christ. And the uniqueness of this letter is there was no major problem other than joy is found in each chapter. And there was no quotation from the Old Testament in this letter. So Christ was mentioned over 40 times and it was more positive letter of, of Paul, which was written. And the theme of this letter is by centering our lives around Christ as we experience true joy. And here the key verse is given only one, but then I have listed many key verses which I will be sharing with you all soon. So the Christ in the Philippians church is Jesus, the son of God from heaven, who humbled himself by becoming human, who suffered for us and who was exalted to heaven. And I would like to share some of the key verses here, which is very important, I felt like. So I just listed them from all four chapters. Philippians chapter 1, 6 talks about God will finish what he begins in you. God will finish the work that which he has started in you, he will finish it. And in verse 21, we see that to live is Christ and to die is gain. And in chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, we see that Christ is our ultimate example for humility. In chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, we read this verse before. It's asking us to press forward to the goal, towards the heavenly goal. And then verse 20 talks about our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we need to behave accordingly. And in chapter 4, verse 4, we see that we are to rejoice always. This should be our attitude. This should be our decision. Despite our situation, we should cultivate, we should develop this attitude within us. It is not something uh, emotional feeling, but it is a decision that we need to make that the joy of the Lord is our strength so that we can rejoice always. And in verse 7, he says, do not be anxious, but trust in Christ. Verse 13, he says that he is encouraging. Paul encourages the believers at the Philippians church saying that we can do all things through Christ to strengthens us and in 19 he says god will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus yes this church had financial difficulties but despite of their difficulty they chose to bless paul willingly to give generously for the ministry and here we see Paul blessing the church, blessing the believers that you will be richly rewarded by God himself. And yes, as he says that we can also apply it to our life. Like when we give, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And there is a blessing. Um, yes, this is what we see time and again uh, in the scripture that, you know, tithing is very important. This is the only place where the scripture says you test and see, test and see God, that when you give, you will be blessed 10 times. Okay, that's the last reflection. Is there anything that you would like to add on to share about this letter? Even before I could move on to the reflection, to the last part of this letter. I think the, one of the first points you mentioned, um, the perspective of Christian life uh, is 
I think it's it's very clearly mentioned in uh, this episode um, to to find joy in whatever circumstances God is uh, allowing us to go through. Um, even yes. I think uh, he was writing this episode during the time he was getting out of prison or towards the end of his uh, house arrest time, and he is telling the importance of being joy. Yes. 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 Thanks, John. Yes, it is very important for us to have this attitude of joy within us. So how do we apply this in our life? How do we apply this into our situation? We see, as we study this letter, we see that though we all have much to be thankful for, but the pace and the pressure of life often squeezes us the joy out of us. Sometimes we become so desperate that we are unable to find this joy within ourselves. We try to search outside. And that is when sometimes most of them go astray. But then here Paul is encouraging us, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Rejoice in your situation. Don't look at your circumstance that you are. And when we praise and give thanks to God, God is all-powerful who can bring us out of that situation. He also showcases that what is impossible by God. And also we see that nothing is out of God's plan. There was a reason, there was a purpose for that situation. We see that when Paul and Silas was in the prison, but they they never counted of their situation. They never looked at what they were in, but instead they praised, they sang praises to God. And what happened? God showed up all powerful. And through that situation, we see that they ministered to the jailer and their family. They received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So every instance, there was a reason. And when they allowed God to be with them, they invited God to be in their situation, in their circumstances, everything turned to be a blessing. So today, Paul is encouraging each of us, despite our situation, despite the life's pressure, what each of us are going through, let's invite Jesus into our life. Let's rejoice and praise because that's what the enemy didn't want to see in us. He wants to rob the joy. He wants to rob the peace of what God has already put into us. So here Paul is asking us, make a decision to be joyful. Have a mind of Christ. So when we have mind of Christ, we can have the joy of Christ who's indwelling in us. So Paul knew this. And the, that's why he states that the true joy comes only when we humble in faith and when we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Savior in our life and look at him, be focused on him. And we can come out of every desperate situation. We will be an overcomer. Because that's what the scripture says, that you are more than an overcomer. The very beautiful promise that Paul gives us through this letter is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can apply it to any of a situation and encourage ourselves that we are not alone. The word which became flesh is indwelling within us, which has the power to overcome our weakness. Most of the time, when we look at our weakness, like, you know, sometimes I feel when I look at my weakness, I feel like running away, want to give up. Most of the time, sometimes the fear becomes much bigger than what than the God that we can rely upon. But when we focus, when we change our focus from fear to Christ who is indwelling in us, and here we get the strength, here we draw the power to overcome that weakness. 
to overcome that weakness here we when we have put on the armor of god and remind ourselves like i have the mind of christ and remind of the call that god has called each one of us about the purpose that he has in us then we receive that strength we draw the strength from the source who can strengthen our weakness who can make us an overcomer there is no situation much greater than what god could overcome in and through us we need to rejoice in our weaknesses because very soon it's going to become our strength can we today look at all our weaknesses and bring it to the presence of god along with our weaknesses i would also encourage as paul encourages encourages the philippians church with our financial difficulties if there's anyone in you know in our class in our session who's listening to this video to this session if any of us are going through any financial need bring it to god who's jehovah jire who meets all our needs according to the riches and glory Christ Jesus Can we pray today friends can we look at him and pray for two things to be strengthened in Christ and to look at God for to meet all our needs Can I request one of us as you're led by the spirit to pray to pray on these two points to each of us that God will meet our needs and change our weaknesses to his strength class can i request one of you all to pray father we thank you for the word that you have spoken to us lord we submit all of us lord as we heard today help us to have that attitude of joy in our hearts and to continue to um to surrender to you in that yes. in that area lord jesus that whatever circumstances that we might face help us to remember that you are a provider and you will yes. continue to do that in our lives god as we read today lord jesus My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, we Lord, we receive your provisions. Lord, we receive your promises. Yes, Lord. Into our lives, O oh God. Lord, pray for all of us who are in the call in the class right now. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that who whatever circumstances they are going through, and whatever is their need right now, O oh God, as your word says, you are the God who provides. Lord, we. release your provision over yes. each of us god right now amen and we pray oh god that we would be able to overcome all the challenges that we have and to we would be able to walk according to your plan for us lord jesus thank you oh god we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you so much for joining in today's session thank you god bless see you all tomorrow with the next letter god bless Thank you. I hope this letter was a blessing to each one of us. Yes, amen.